10 Tips for Posing Women One of the most common questions I get is how to improve my poses for women. So watch till the end and I will give you my best tips on how to create a modern, fresh look in your photos. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer. I specialize in photographing women, mostly boudoir, but I also do non-boudoir stuff as well. And my start came from commercial fashion. I never wanted to shoot you know, children or families or honestly boudoir when I first got started, I wanted to do commercial work, like the stuff you see in fashion catalogs and magazines. That to me was the most exciting thing. But I'm in Silicon Valley. We have microchips, we don't have fashion here. So it ended up working out. Uh, I got to meet Lindsay Adler many, many years ago and she had a book out called Fashion Flair for the Portrait and Wedding Photographer. That book changed my life because I realized I can shoot regular people like it's a fashion shoot. So that's how I got started. I got every magazine subscription I could get, like Vogue, Vanity Fair, maybe even like 17. Like I had every women's magazine out there coming to my apartment and I would tear pages out and I would file them in this like Rolodex folder bin thing. This is pre-interest, pre-Instagram. I just copied the poses that I saw in these fashion magazines and I would bring people into my apartment. I just have friends come in and I would photograph them basically in my living room and learn how to do these poses from emulating these fashion magazines. So that's how I learned. And then from there, I learned how to do more boudoir style photos, but it's all just from up here learning the fundamentals that I know of posing. So that's what I want to share with you today. This isn't going to be your traditional boudoir poses of the high heel hooked in the underwear on the bed. If you want to do that, neat. That's not my jam. I'm going to give you posing tips on how to really make your images pop and be flattering for your clients, really regardless of what kind of photography you want to do. So I pulled up 10 of my own images here. I'm using Photoshop so I can mark everything up for you and give you like a John Madden play by play about why I did the certain things in these photos that I did. And those are gonna be my 10 tips. So image number one here. You don't always have to have your client or your subject look at the camera. So one of the things that I like to do is, you know, we do the look at the camera, we look 45 degrees away, and then I don't say look down your shoulder. I used to, but people would like lean over and it, it looked ridiculous. So I say, you know, sit up nice and straight, bring your chin to your collarbone, and then people bring their chin down to their collarbone. Otherwise also they'll tilt their head to look down and that's not it. So it's chin to the collarbone, not collarbone to chin, cause then you lose the neck also, but chin to collarbone. And that's how I get this look of where she's looking down her shoulder. And then as I'll touch on in a different image, I like to have my clients interacting with their clothing. And this is one of my favorite shots to do here, pulling the strap down off the shoulder. The other big takeaway from this is look how soft her hands are. She's not gripping them. She's not pinching them. Her fingers are nice and soft as she's doing it. So when you combine these two elements of the eyes closed, looking down the shoulder, and the soft hands pulling the strap down, it gives you this very soft, feminine, like voyeuristic look. Like you're observing this scene, like is she taking this off for you? Uh, who else is in the room? Um, or just is it her, just herself, you know? But it, it tells a story. So that is image number one. All right, image number two. So a lot of women are self-conscious. No surprise, uh, everybody is really. And one of the problem areas, if you will, are love handles and like underarm skin, right? Everyone wants like thin arms and they don't want their, you know, to be muffin topping over their underwear or their pants. So I like to raise the arms, but you know, unless you're at a, at a concert waving them like you just don't care, why would you have your arms up? So what I like to do is have them take their hair and just like lift it slowly and pull it out because then we get well, for one, it kind of makes a heart shape. That's kind of cool. Uh, but it just lifts all of the beautiful hair and creates this volume, which is cool. The hands are nice and soft while she's doing this. She's not tense because you can't lock up and do this stiffly or robotically. 
and it stretches out all of this and creates this beautiful shape. I also have her cross her legs here. Instead of the legs being parallel, they are crossed, which will make the hourglass figure even more accentuated. And lastly, if you'll notice, let me zoom in on her butt here. She's not sitting all the way back on the bench. She's barely halfway on this bench. And as I'm looking at it right now, I mean, those squares are probably seven inches, eight inches. So she's barely on this bench. And the reason I do that is because when anyone is sitting down, the farther back in the chair they are, the more their bottom and their thighs will smush out. But if just the edge of your bottom is on the chair or the bench and your thighs are not, then things don't smush out as much and it keeps things looking, well, less smushed. So that is another takeaway from this image. I know the video is 10 tips to pose women better, but I'm gonna give you probably 20, 30 today. So this is gonna be one you're gonna wanna go back and rewatch and take notes. All right, in this one, uh, make sure the furniture you're using is the appropriate size for the person. So she can comfortably fit on here and do this pose. We create triangles, it's asymmetrical, uh, just, I, I love this image. This is one of my favorites I've taken recently. But her other leg is like comfortably down and her toes are pointed. This is a good height for her. I don't want her foot just swinging back and forth because she's not tall enough to reach the ground. At the same time, if she was too tall, she would have to sit farther back to keep this leg on here. And it, it wouldn't look as proportioned. It goes with chairs also. If you have someone who's too short to sit in a certain chair or on top of a stool and their, their feet barely touch the ground and it looks like, like a child in a grown up seat, don't, don't use that. Unless that's the look you're going for, but, but most grown ups don't wanna look like children in oversized furniture. Same thing goes if it's too small. If someone is sitting down, and you know, normally knees are out here in front of you, just like slightly down. If someone's knees are up higher than their waistline, that is not a good look either. So, I mean, obviously I did it in this intentionally so she could rest her arm on it. Uh, but if she was sitting on the ground and instead of her legs going this way, her legs went up this way because her legs are so long, that wouldn't look right. So choose the furniture that's the best fit for your clients. I have adjustable or one adjustable stool where the seat goes up and down. That's like my favorite because it'll work for everybody. If you're, you know, five feet to six and a half, it will, it will cover you. So that's it. All right, couple things in this one. I mean like the back arch, classic boudoir pose. I always like to do it at an angle like this as opposed to straight on. And I shoot it with a 35 millimeter lens so it really lengthens the client because Everyone would rather look longer and leaner than short and stubby, guaranteed. But a couple things here. When you're bringing this leg up, I, I always keep the legs asymmetrical. So one is higher than the other. I don't always choose the same leg. Now standing is a different story. That one, if someone is standing, the leg closest to the camera always gets bent. Otherwise, if the leg closest to the camera is straight, they look like a flamingo. So the laying down here, I will generally bring the closer leg up. And the reason is because it blocks part of the belly. Also, because it creates more curve here and that's very aesthetically pleasing. However, if I were to have extended this one and bring that back knee up more, now she's gonna look even longer. So what I'll do sometimes for, uh, for clients who don't appear as long when I put them into this pose, I will swap the legs. And, and I don't even really think about it. I just, I'll shoot this and then I'll have them swap their legs and then I'll shoot it again and I'll look at it later when I'm doing my call to find out which one is more aesthetically pleasing. Maybe I'll leave them both in there and let them decide if I end up liking both photos. But what's great about this is you're also arching the back. And so it stretches things out here, it stretches things out here, and love seeing the clavicle and the bottom of the jaw here. So again, when you're doing poses where someone is laying down or sitting down, you can bring this knee up to hide part of the belly if that's an area that they're self-conscious about, or you can bring the closer knee down to make them look even longer. Okay, so, 
women have curves. It's magic. I am a big fan. And one of the things that we should be doing as photographers is accentuating those curves. Again, unless somebody specifically doesn't want that, this is what we're doing. So in her situation, she's not standing straight up and down. She's standing more, I know it's kind of hard. Let me draw that better here to here. Her hip is popped out on the side to create these curves. So what I have them do is stand, I can't demo this. Basically, I have her bring one foot in front of the other one and then just shift her weight to the side. Easy peasy. Or she can have both of her legs down parallel and then just shift her weight to the side. It will achieve the same effect. But I, I rarely ever have someone stand straight up and down like this. Um, not like this, just straight up and down. That's like the Wonder Woman power pose. That is the like assertive dominant stance. Like it's very, come at me, bro. So if I'm having that sort of look, totally cool, but it needs to be intentional. Otherwise just shift, shift hips off to one side, drop a shoulder back and you can get a much more dynamic image. Okay, what do I do with my hands? This is what you do with your hands. Interact with the fabric. As we saw in that other photo, as she was taking the strap down, this is what we're doing here. Uh, I generally don't like these kind of flowy fabrics because they don't show the body, but they're great because you can selectively lift up parts of it, or I would turn her around and have her do a similar pose, lifting that up, like showing a little bit of booty cheek. So that is another cool thing. But if you're not sure what to do with hands, again, they can grab the straps, they can play with the hair, they can grab onto the flowy fabric. That is what to do with these. Okay, I alluded to this before on the bench. When I'm having a woman stand straight onto the camera, even if she's not, I put one foot in front of the other and see it creates this triangle, this taper, which really accentuates this hourglass figure. Whereas if I had both legs together, this would come down like this and just not look as hourglassy. So easy peasy. Uh, I will generally do the leg closest to my light because my light's coming in from here. If you shoot bright and airy stuff and you don't have like this obvious directionality in your images, go with whatever's more comfortable. Sometimes my clients can only balance with one foot in front of the other one, like left over right or right over left, they can't do both. So in that scenario, yeah, we just do whatever one works best for them. Uh, also, when you have them bring the chin down to the collarbone and close their eyes, it can be really hard for some people to balance like this with their eyes closed. So keep that in mind, be ready to get the shot before you have them close their eyes. Usually what I'll do is I'll put them into the pose, I'll do the thing, and then I'll have them close their eyes as I take the photo, and then we move on to the next shot. And you can see this carried over from my last image. I have her just very gracefully pulling the fabric out on the sides here to interact with her wardrobe. Otherwise, I would just have her bring her hands out almost the same way and just like soft ballet hands. Death to the duck face. Zero reason we need to do that. And when my clients try and do it during shoots, <laughs> I, I will just straight up tell them like, please don't do the duck face. You're, you're gonna hate this a year from now, six months from now. Um, so what do I do instead? I always tell my clients in the beginning, don't try to make sexy faces because everyone looks angry, constipated, or like a duck. So I just, whatever your face is doing is great. Don't worry about trying to make certain faces and I will tell you if we need to do otherwise because I guide my clients into adjusting their face. It's part of the posing process. So one of my favorite things to do is this open-ish mouth look right here. So to get that, I simply have them take a big breath in through their nose and slowly breathe out through their mouth. Sometimes people will make the face and I'm like, cool, but without doing the duck face and they're like, oh, Okay, like just relax your mouth, big breath in, out your mouth. And when I do these close-up shots too, I have them close their eyes. Uh, I like to have them close their eyes anyway. I love that in photos. Uh, but it just gives you this nice, soft, open mouth look without telling someone to just part your lips and look relaxed because then people clench up their jaw when they try to do that. 
This way they don't clench their jaw. Okay, two things in this. Um, again, we're interacting with the clothes. This is one of my favorite shots to do. I bend the back leg under, the front leg goes up. If they're in thigh highs and I have them roll it up and over their knee and then we do it in reverse and I just take a bunch of photos as we go up and down. I'm like, look at your feet, look at the camera, look off to your right, different things like that. Uh, get a good variety of those and we can crank out like eight pretty unique shots in 30 seconds. It's wonderful. But the other part, natural emotion. Because you're probably gonna be having fun in your shoot. I hope you are. So always be ready to get that natural emotion. When you're saying things that are funny, you guys are vibing, you're having a good time, don't just wait for the static poses. Like get them laughing and being real because that, that's where the magic is at. Especially if their partner is coming in to help them pick out the photos. Uh, in my experience, when the dudes come in to help their ladies pick out pictures, the ladies always want the sexy, seductive ones. The guys take this every single time. All right, last one, using props. Don't force props in just for the sake of using them. It needs to kind of make sense and tell a little bit of a story. And if it's not working, just put them down. So I always serve Prosecco when my clients come in to do their hair and makeup you know, as we get started or bubbly water, whatever. Some of my clients, they don't want that for their shoot, but I'm like, cool, I'm gonna pour some in this flute and then uh, we're gonna pose with it like you're having it. And then that's cool too. And again, we're gripping it nice and easy, soft hands. I also put a bunch of crowns in my studio. This one's more like a tiara. I have some more like legit queen crowns. But you can see I brought one leg in front of the other to accentuate the hourglass here. Um, Hand nice and soft on this side. This hand is out to the side a little bit because I don't want the shoulder to come down and then just have the arm come straight at the camera. Then we'll lose that whole bottom half of the arm to foreshortening, if you're not sure what that is. Basically, I should just tell you, arm is out of the side, it looks like an entire arm. If I hold the arm up to the camera, I'm not Nazi saluting, let's go both arms. You lose the depth here in these arms, right? You can't tell how long they are. It's the same thing when somebody sits down and you shoot them straight on at the knees, the thighs totally disappear and it looks like shins are coming out of their, their hips. It looks weird. So always turn the hands out to the side a little bit unless they're specifically reaching out at the camera. Yeah, those are my more than 10 tips for how to pose women. Again, I know I threw a lot at you. You're gonna wanna go back, watch this one a few more times take some notes and revisit it because this is some stuff that it's going to make sense to you right now and you're going to get into the shoot and forget to do it and then you're going to dial in these poses like you're going to get the one foot over the other you're going to pop the hip out you're going to get soft hands but then some other things too you know like the chin to shoulder or how did i get the soft lips for the open mouth thing again you're maybe not ready for all of it right now but it'll build and so again bookmark this one keep coming back and I think the best way to actually remember all of these things is if you subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribing to the channel definitely improves your memory and will help you get better at posing a lot faster. So do that. I've got some other good posing videos on here too. And check out the image critiques I do also uh, of other people's work. And I do my own image critiques on here too. So you can see, you know, learn from other people's mistakes on how to make your own photography better. And if you're like Mike, just how do I do this as fast as possible? I want to be the best gosh darn posing wizard around. Just head to boudoirguild.com and check out the posing course because that'll get you there. All right. You are amazing. See you inside. <laughs>